guys, welcome. It's Sunday, August 15th. My name is Dave Croker and this is Talking About Finance. And you know the routine by now. It's just what me and my buddies are talking about over the past week. Uh, people in Wall Street, the city of London, and one guy in Shanghai actually. Uh, find the markets very fascinating. We have a Telegram channel where we talk about lots of stuff, uh, mostly finance though. <laughs> so we'll start out like we do most weeks and we'll take a look at the S&P 500. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at year-to-date performance. And my gosh, guys, this market is on fire. It's absolutely amazing. Um, look at the returns on some of these stocks. Microsoft, Google, absolutely incredible. Apple even. Uh, it's really wild what's going on in the markets. And I've been investing in the markets since I've been a little kid. I've never seen anything quite like this. Now, I mentioned before, I only buy dividend-paying stocks. Oh, 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 bullion as well, <laughs> as you know from last week. This is the first time... I've been 100% invested. I usually keep some cash on the side just in case a sweet buying out presents itself, but not this time. I'm all in, and we'll just have to see how this goes. I've got great hopes for it, at least over the next 12 months or so, but you never can tell because we're overdue for a correction, guys. Uh, analysts right now are the most bullish on U.S. stocks they've been for about 20 years, fully 56%. Of the recommendations in S&P 500 stocks are buys. This is the most we've seen since 2002. Now, corporate earnings have been good, and this has resulted in a lot of analysts upgrades, and that's driving money into stocks. But I got to say this, you know, it, it, it seems that stocks are disconnected from the underlying economy. And this has happened in the past without a doubt, but it's never ended well. And we'll see what happens here. We were going a long time without a correction. So it's going to happen at some point. It's going to happen, I don't know when, we just don't know, but it'll happen on another day. And speaking of another day, we've got all-time highs. So until then, the party just goes on and on and on. And we're seeing day after day when markets are closing at new all-time highs. We're at 46 for 2021. Oh, and this chart was, uh, this is not my work, obviously, it's Biello's. It was generated last Wednesday, I believe. I'd have to take a look at this. So in any case, guys, we're at 46 for 2021. And if you put it into context, and you can review these numbers yourself, uh, either grab it off his Instagram feed, or uh, uh, just take it here, take a screenshot here. But you can see from 63 to 68, we had 171. From 2013 to 2021, we've had 322. My gosh. So things are definitely a little bit odd. And this isn't really just a U.S. phenomenon, guys. If we look at global stock market capitalizations, we can see we're at roughly $118 trillion. Now, to give you some context for this, that's about 140%, a little bit higher than 140% of world GDP. And it never used to be this way. In fact, um, there, there were in the past, you used to see U.S. stock market cap exceed U.S. GDP. It happened. But when you looked at Europe, we tended to see sharp discounts in some cases, or just discounts in some cases, between GDP and stock market capitalization. We're not seeing it now. And I blame the Americans and perhaps the Chinese for so much of this because both are, um, the people are so alike in the sense that uh, we both love action, like to make money, and Chinese are bidding up their stocks. Same thing in the States. So I think maybe a lot of this, I, I haven't got it decomposed off Bloomberg to look at centers, but I, I'm kind of suspect it's between U.S. and China, and then other ones are a little bit understated. So regardless, though, this is a global bubble, and we know what happens with bubbles. They just tend to get bigger. Now, this is a curious one. This shows the top five U.S. companies by market cap in 2010. So Exxon, Petro, Apple, ICBC, and Microsoft. And then we can see again in 2020. Now, guys, it's really wild. Oh, yeah, and check this out. It's Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, um, Alphabet, Facebook. It's really wild because when you see that these companies, the, the top five, look at the scale that these megatechs or mega caps, whatever you want to call them, are running at these days. We've got three com companies that are trillion over a trillion dollars in market cap. That was really unusual until about two years ago. Alphabet's flirted with it. They've been above a trillion. And Facebook, well, you know, we'll see what happens with Facebook. <laughs> they're, they're still, they got a really beefy market cap, and they're in the top five. That It's amazing what's going on. There's so much money wasn't about these days. The rules are just being rewritten, guys. And when we start to rewrite rules, maybe the textbooks are being rewritten. Now, <laughs> this is such a good one. I didn't do this as one of my buddies. Uh, check this out. For those of you who have uh, sat a finance class, 
you'll recognize the formula. If you hadn't, don't, if you haven't, don't worry about it. It's easy to understand. This is called CAPM, the Capital Asset Pricing Model. And what we're doing is we're describing from left to right. I'll read it. We're describing the expected return on a stock as being equal to a sum, a sum of R sub F, the risk-free rate, plus beta sub I times some stuff in parentheses, and plus. We're adding in now, and the classic formula was ended right there. But now, what some people are saying that we should do uh, is we're going to put Reddit enthusiasm in there. <laughs> it's like, God, this is the funniest thing. And if you haven't been on Wall Street Bets on Reddit, go, 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 go. Really, I, I post in there sometimes. I'm not going to tell you. I don't use my real name. But you can see if you can figure me out. Now, I post in, in Wall Street Bets. It's just a good time to read. And they are very, oh, my God, they just really go into stocks in a major way. I, I, I was never that that bold. <laughs> it's really cool to see this type of enthusiasm. And I really hope post-pandemic that a lot of these guys are going to stick around and still invest because it's absolutely wonderful. The, the only way you get rich, guys, really, from the stock market, a lot of people have this misconception. They think they can all do it like in the last five years before they retire. Uh-uh. It doesn't work that way. Uh, can't recall who said it, but it's time in the market that counts, not the time you enter the market. So I hope these guys will stick around, half of them or maybe more, after. But we're all looking to make money, guys. And a serious question is, where are you going to be investing to try to make money? Now, you've always got to look ahead. And we saw last week, we learned last week that Mr. Biden wants half, 50%, of all cars sold in the U.S. to be electric. Right now, we're at a little bit under 3%, 2.4%. Of cars. So what you got to do is you got to look ahead and try to figure out how to make money at this, right? So his decision is going to drive lots of investment, not only in car companies, without a doubt, but also batteries and the related technology. So think about where you might invest capital and uh, to make money. It's this is the op guys. You're thinking thinking ahead right now. It's not that far out, 2021 to 2030. We're going to start to see it ramping up really quickly in the next six to 12 months. So if you get in, you can probably do pretty well with that trade. If you sit back and wait and get closer to 2030, I don't think a lot of the growth will be gone. So it might be a really good opportunity to make some money. And speaking of making money, if you've gone into houses, you've done well. This is from last Thursday's FT. So if you haven't read it, check it out. I just grabbed an interesting chart from it. It's a really interesting uh, article they've got there. But you can see how house prices have exploded and they're tracking much, much higher than earnings and consumer price index, or CPI. You know, I've got to say, it's a real puzzle how people can continue to pay these prices. But with interest rates at record lows, maybe it's not. My own opinion, I think the results are a little bit distorted by some high price changes in some nations or some regions. And I say that because, as I've shared with you guys before, I've got a fairly large property business in the UK. I won't tell you exactly how big, but it's really big. Uh, the point is this, there are hot spots in the UK where price, house prices are definitely doing really, really well and it's jaw dropping the rate of increase. But in general, they're not surging that much. Some of the areas, now I operate in the UK, I operate, I also operate in Australia, United States, but in the UK, I operate in London, Liverpool and Hartlepool. And looking at, at, at these three areas, I've seen drops in certain areas. I've seen actually big gains in other areas, but it's an interesting chart. But to try to look at these things critically, guys, because I, I don't think it's going up as much as this index presents. But that, again, that's just my subjective feeling based upon what I know from my, my property business and looking at properties and you know doing the things that you do with a property business, which is acquire property. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, all right, now guys, finally, you just know we're going to talk about Bitcoin. And this is from Plan B on Twitter. If you haven't seen his work, check him out. He's actually pretty cool. I've presented his stuff before. He's an interesting guy. He's an analyst for a Dutch bank. That's about all we know about him. We don't have to know no more, right? Uh, people are very insistent that they, they dox the guy. I don't, I don't quite understand why, in all honesty. Now, as far as I know, he was the first to apply a stock-to-flow model to Bitcoin. And we know that stock-to-flow models work for some commodities, and it seems to have performed pretty well. The white line is the stock-to-flow model. He's also doing some time series analysis, but we won't look at that so much. The key thing I wanted to bring your attention to is that he's got the white lines outlined in the regions where Bitcoin's going to trade for certain periods of time, and it's all backed by the halving. And I'll drop a link down in the bottom where I explain the halving. But the idea is this, guys. If you take a look at the stock-to-flow model, he's suggesting that we'll 
have a, a, a cap, a, a upward limit, roughly 100,000 by 2024. So we'll trade in that range. Now, I don't know. I don't like level predictions at all. I am still buying Bitcoin, as I've shared with you guys, every Friday. And you might want to think about getting some exposure. He's not the only one with these forecasts, by the way, guys. And, you know, there are sour pusses like uh, Rubini who say it's going to zero. <laughs> I don't think so. There's an awful lot of institutional money, and there's a lot of banks active in this space right now. If you look at my blog, FinTech Flash News, you'll see Bank of New York Mellon is calling for 100000 by Q4 2021. That was going back about two months ago, I think, that prediction. And JP Morgan's even more optimistic. My gosh. Uh, I don't really care because I buy and hold. I never sell. And it's the only way to be when it comes to Bitcoin. Forget trying to trade. It's too stressful. It's too risky. And guys... I'm so tired of hearing people describe themselves as traders. We've got data from the IRS in the States, and we know that in America, at least, we know, and I'm sure it's the same other, in other areas, we know that fully 95% of people who identify as traders, they don't even break even. This has been debunked by the tax people. Of the 5% that at least break even, we know a very, very small percentage of them are doing so in a way that is meaningful that they can change their lives. Oh, and this is the best one ever, right? We know that when people end up in that 5% where they're doing better, they're better than breaking even, we know their average longevity there is about two years. <laughs> so I just laugh when someone says, oh, I'm a trader, took profits. These people are full of it. If they had any integrity, they would tell you the trades on Monday, and then you could just see what they did over the next week or next two weeks or whatever by Friday. They never do. All you hear is this garbage, yeah, I took profits, and they never lose money. And I'm up front with you guys. I lost $142,000 in the corona crash. Made it all back since, but that is the type of candor. And I've just really had it with these idiots that talk about being traders. So don't try to trade Bitcoin. Don't try to trade anything. Buy and hold. It really is the only way to be sure of building wealth. Trading is a mugs game. Just buy some decent dividend-paying stocks, Reinvest the dividends, do that over a 10-year period, continue to add capital, and you will be financially independent. This is the way it works. This is the only surefire way to become financially independent. So in any case, guys, hope you're going to have a great week. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful opportunity in the markets this week. You're going to make buckets of money, lots of opportunity out there. Just keep your capital, your cash flow, pardon me, your capital safe. Identify something, buy it. And hold on to it. Don't try to trade it. My God, are you crazy? All right, guys, take care. Have a good week.